Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave the Cyber Guy. My name's Dave Stevens. I'm an instructor at uh, the University of Hawaii, Kefiolani Community College. I teach ethical hacking and network security. This is my show, The Cyber Underground. Welcome back today. On the show, we have some announcements to make at the state level and some really great stuff to go over in, in cybersecurity as well. Today with me are Tim Ames from Hawaii Tech Support and Reynold Hioki, the state cybersecurity coordinator. Wow, I got through that whole thing without stuttering. That's yeah. a first. It's, <laughs> Good I, job. I'm not, I'm not Stephen Colbert, you know, I try. But. <laughs> he gets multiple takes, though. He gets better suits. Yeah, yeah I want better suits. Right? <laughs> he gets the dress a lot better. Uh, he shaved the beard. I didn't he's still that. got a beard. Yeah, yeah, I still got my hair. I was thinking about growing it back, but it's all great. How you guys doing? Doing good, Dave. Right. Uh, just to review, Reynold, tell us a little bit about your history. Very little, because you've got little. a long history in the no, state. No, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> so uh, basically, uh, you want where I came, all of that. So born and raised in Hawaii. So uh, Good for you, man, and you stayed. And I, thank I, you. I did not stay. I, went, I left a little bit, but I came back. You're back. That's right. what's important. So, uh, yeah. went, went out, uh, went to college on the mainland, uh, joined the Air Force, uh, and then transferred back to uh, the Hawaii Air National Guard, which was probably the best thing I could have done. And you retired there. And I just retired yeah. a couple years ago. So. And then they've been trying to plug you back into multiple positions ever since you left, yeah? Ever since I left, I actually, I was in a lot of positions. Eventually, I shed them all down to just one position, the current position. And a position state cybersecurity coordinator. Tell me a little bit about that position real quick. Uh, so that position really is a, kind of a community outreach position. So it's, it really doesn't have anything to do with all the things you kind of think on the dark side. So I, I work with uh, K through 12 college students with their clubs, uh, the community, the nonprofit, cyber uh, professional associations, uh, really anyone in the community. Uh, seniors, we try to get basically, and the message we're trying to do is get the cyber safety awareness message out to everybody. Uh, for a good example, as I was talking earlier, uh, I was talking to the Girl Scouts today. Girl uh, Scouts, having a we're cyber, gonna have them on the show now. We're gonna, yeah, we're right. gonna try to bring them on the show, right on. and uh, you know, they're, they're starting a cyber security badge program right now. That's so. wonderful. I mean, we're, we're starting to educate kids earlier, and I, I love that because everyone's got the ubiquitous smartphone at age four or whatever, mm -hmm. and it's like this magical device that no one really understands what's going on. And I, we've been preaching this for years. It's a hive mentality. Everybody's gotta be playing the game. Everybody's gotta have the knowledge of what's secure and what's not. Otherwise, one weak link and yeah. you go down, right? Yeah, I mean, in, in this case, especially in, a, in an organization, uh, one weak link is the weak link. Right. So, you know, I, I played a little in sports, and uh, the coach would say the weakest link is the best. Yeah, that actually not completely true if the weakest link never plays, right? <laughs> but in this case, in a, net, in a network, in an organization, everyone plays on the net. So one guy does one click and it, it brings everything down. Right. Cutest video ever of kittens. The kitty click. <laughs> oh my gosh, how many times have we done that one in a phishing email scam? Okay. Tim, tell us a little bit about yourself. We, you've been on the show before, but for the people in the cheap seats that never watch, and this is the first time tuning in, tell us who you are, where you came from, what you do. Well, first of all, I know that everybody who watches your show has been watching it from the beginning, and you just your audience keeps growing. So I don't, I don't well, buy that. That's just my mom. I don't buy it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, my name's Tim. I'm with the uh, I with Hawaii Tech Support. So I'm the CTO for Hawaii Tech Support. We're a uh, managed service provider. Uh, we okay, cheap seats. Managed yeah, service managed service provider. provider. Yeah. Uh, so we are outsource IT for small, medium-sized businesses that either don't have their own internal IT team or they have an IT team, but they don't have maybe a good deep bench strength in things like cybersecurity, uh, networking, maybe voice over IP or cloud technology. Good money saver yeah, for businesses. Absolutely, a big time and needed service in the state. And and how'd you get here? I got here, uh, so I, I got out of the uh, Marine Corps and took a job here yeah, with the, uh, yeah, five. Five. <laughs> uh, with the uh, Department of Defense as a contractor. Um, I m moved on. I, I actually, after a couple years being here, missing the Marine Corps, I decided to join the Hawaii Army you National Guard. You missed the Marine Corps? Yeah, no, I didn't. Uh, so, uh, yeah, th and then I ended Not up true. retiring from the, the Guard as well. Uh, yeah. Well, that's that, great. I actually, no Reynolds from the from the guard. So yeah, he was, we were, he was a, You had to work with Reynolds. Basic. So sorry. I did. He had, he, had the, he had the pleasure to work with you. Yeah, he had the pleasure. I had the pleasure to work with him. <laughs> well, what's going on in the state? Uh, we're doing. Um, what are we doing? So, uh, just wanted to share with everybody that uh, October is National Cybersecurity Awareness Month, 
and there's a whole bunch of things going on that many of us are working. So a lot of cyber safety uh, events and activities going throughout the state uh, that we want the community to kind of join us and share and, and help us uh, celebrate National Cyber Security Awareness. Well, let's go through some of those events really quick. Okay. Uh, we have some graphics to, to put up on the screen, right? Yeah, so uh, probably the biggest event that I want to talk about is uh, we're having uh, cyber safety presentations that are being presented at 19 of our uh, public libraries. So we're partnering with the uh, Hawaii State Public Library System, uh, our state librarian, uh, Stacy Aldrich, uh, who's providing the facilities at the library for this, as well as ISC Squared Hawaii Chapter, who's standing up a speaker's bureau. And so that's where all the presenters are coming from, is from ISC Squared. And these are the four main islands right here. And uh, we're going all four island, islands. Kauai, yep. Hawaii, Maui. So we tried our yep. best. Uh, Oahu was re really easy, because there's a lot of professionals here on Oahu, but we did have a challenge getting to the Otter Islands, because uh, not as many people. Yeah, I was surprised uh, Maui has the high-tech, uh, what well, not high-tech, the high-speed. Oh, the. Uh, yeah. High capacity data center, sorry. the High performance data. There you go. There you go. <laughs> High it performance is. computing da data center. There you go. There we go. Uh, but that's, that's, uh, it's run by the DOD and Hawaii University, or uh, University yep, of Hawaii, right? Um, and I'm surprised you couldn't get more high-tech people out there. Yeah, part of, part of it really is because I live here, right? So uh, we have reached out to uh, uh, Debashish. I think you know who that is. Debashish Bhattacharya yeah. is the IT program coordinator for the ICS programs at uh, University of Hawaii Maui College. Right? Yeah. So, okay. and there's other people, uh, but but even then, it's not like here. I mean, here we probably have literally hundreds of cybersecurity professionals, right. all certified. Beyond and the, the other islands, is a handful. Yeah, a handful. Yeah, so beyond even the certified, there's a there's a whole bunch that that play this, but just never got certified. And maybe I should move to Kauai. Well, if we're busy here, imagine how busy they are there with less people and, oh, and just yeah. the same problems. Yeah. It's always work, yeah. huh? Always work. Maybe you guys should open an office out there. You know, we, we actually have some clients over there. Do so you really? If you're on Maui, you're <laughs> All right, I'm going to check it out. <laughs> it's good to know. You guys going to expand uh, the other Yeah, so we, we actually have a physical presence uh, over on Big Island now. Oh, that's uh, good. We have a uh, partner. Kona side, Hilo side? Uh, Kona side. Kona, Kona, Kona side, yeah. good, OK. And then we have, uh, I mean, we can get anywhere, though, you know, once you're on the island. Um, we also have uh, partners that we work with, Maui, Kauai, so, uh, and we're actually making a move into Your business Maui. is going like gangbusters. Yeah, it is. I, that really is inspiring to me. Yeah, good job. I appreciate it, yeah. Wow. No, it's been hard work, but it's been paying off, and, and we love our client base, you know, wow. we love our customer base. So. And then your energy it's, it's is what business. brings it. Oh, I thanks. Mean, that, that's yeah. what makes the business work. Yeah. Hey, let's talk about some of the other things. We got uh, some more graphics going on. Okay. We just passed the libraries. Number two here. So let's let's go down to the next uh, slide. So we'll we'll talk. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, slide before this. Okay, there we go. Uh, Will you have open mics for community forums? Yeah. So it's like stand-up comedy. So <laughs> this is great for cybersecurity. I'll, I'll the mic. So I'll yeah. talk real quick about the open mics. So what we're doing is we're having present. Uh, we're having uh, basically webinar kind of uh, Skype sessions where people can call in uh, Tuesday, 7 p.m. or Saturday. Uh, 3 p.m. throughout October. So we'll get a couple, several cybersecurity professionals and they'll just uh, really open the mic for the community to come in and ask any questions. Again, it's all about uh, awareness, trying to understand uh, some of these concepts so that people can be a little safer and more secure when they're connected. I know more transparency too in technology takes away anxiety. You know, we yeah, all yes. read the articles yes. every day, and we're going to discuss them after the break. Uh, some of these articles saying, you know, you can be hacked by E911 or Apple's putting these chips in your phone and Chinese are spying on you or the Russians are interfering in the elections. And, and it's nice to get real cybersecurity professionals yeah. to say, this is real, this is not. This right. is, you know, uh, that I, transparency what, really What do you need to way. be concerned about? Yeah, yeah. what is the, right. yeah. And, and when you need to be concerned, what can you do? Or is sure. it just something that's happening to you and you have no control? You have to accept it. You have to accept yeah. it. <laughs> yep. So in, in the end, I think awareness and understanding really goes a long way. But uh, let's talk about another one. If you can throw on the next slide after that. So I'll, I'll turn it over to Tim for oh, the yeah. hands-on so workshops. Yeah, so um, Whole Foods is, is uh, volunteered some uh, spaces in uh, the one here in town. We got the call. Yeah, and uh, uh, basically just, just time for us to give a presentation on, you know, keeping, we're, we're doing a presentation on mobility security. So, you know, keeping your mobile data secure, how to, how to keep your phone you know, uh, everybody's carrying computers in their pocket nowadays. Important. Yeah, tremendously, tremendously important. Tremendously important, and nobody knows how to do it. Banking on the phone, you do everything on the phone. So right. how, do you, how do you keep that phone secure, you know? And uh, we'll go over that, uh, some software as a service. A lot of people are using cloud email, uh, you know, Office 365, Google, all the, how do, you, how do you use those and how do you do it securely, right? So 
it, it's great to have the tools, but if you're if you're not using the tools correctly in a in a safe and secure fashion, which great, uh, ISC squared is doing their their public uh, library piece on uh, uh, what is it the uh, safe and secure online. We, we they teach that to kids in schools too, and you know it's it's really applies to all ages. But uh, keeping the kids safe and secure online is a different strategy than keeping adults safe and secure online. You know, but it's strange yeah. that keeping kids secure online is now becoming quite similar to keeping the elderly mm -hmm. safe and secure online. And there's a difference. The kids grew up with this technology, and the elderly elderly did not. You know, I'm I'm constantly having to go wipe certain members of my family, their computer, <laughs> over and over again, because it looks so real it does. when they get hit. Not just a kitty video, but hey, your bank account has been hacked, you need to change your credentials, click here, and, and they go and enter their credentials. I know we, we talked about this before, uh, the dark web credential scouring. So yeah. there's a lot, of, on the dark web, I, everybody hears about dark web, there's a lot of repositories where credentials get stored. So from the Facebook hack or from uh, Ashley Madison, you know all those all those big time hacks. Uh, your credentials, your email password, and your email and your password is, is stored somewhere on the dark web. Hopefully, you're not using that password anymore. There's a new scam going around where people are getting emails. Our, our clients have been getting some of these emails, so we we started blocking them. But they get an email saying, "Hey, this is your this is your username. This is your email address, and this is your password. Does it look familiar?" We got it because you went to an adult website and signed up for a service. <laughs> I've seen that. Don't yeah. worry, we'll go ahead and delete all this information as soon as you send five hundred dollars to this Bitcoin address. Really cool. They give you a link on how to set up Bitcoin. So, <laughs> great customer <laughs> service. Install Tor. <laughs> yeah, yep. they put we'll, Bitcoin. We'll get you through there. Yeah, yeah we'll we'll help yeah. you out. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very we're service, on your side. Very right. service oriented. <laughs> yeah, and same thing with that pop. There's a pop up uh, ad saying, "Call Microsoft. Here's the phone number. Call them up because you have uh, malicious software." It's not coming from Microsoft. You call that number, they get access into your, you give them access. They talk people into giving them access into their computer. Install this little control. It's amazing. Browser plugin. Yeah. They, and they have get, people yeah. going into command line. They have your 68, 5, 75 year old grandmother or whatever going into command line and, and doing some pretty good advanced uh, stuff. <laughs> I, I want to hire these guys, you know, if we can only turn them to good. It's hilarious. And, and I don't think people uh, realize that home networks, when uh, granddad mm -hmm. falls for the, the scam and installs that controller, he's on your network at home. That computer is now a pivot point for hackers Absolutely. to scan yep. and access and exploit the rest of the computers on the network. I like that you say that word pivot point. You know, that's a, that's a good good uh it tells you exactly what it is it's a lateral attack you're using that computer to to branch out to all the other computers yeah. what's even worse in the business community if i'm letting my employees take a computer home and they're doing stuff they shouldn't be at home and then they bring that back into the office you know and that computer is now the pivot it's a point. danger it's dangerous right? so the yeah. hackers now established a beachhead and and they can pivot on that and attack mm -hmm. you from multiple vectors, right. including mobile devices at that time, yes. right? Because yeah. you have wireless and you have wired, mm -hmm. yeah, and Bluetooth is now a danger. Uh, they won't even let you wear your uh, Apple Watch in some meetings at uh, <laughs> in certain locations up here that shall be nameless. <laughs> the TOD. Hopefully not Apple. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's not Apple. Yeah, there. I would right. imagine they're, they're secure, right? Hey, let's talk about more of these events that are coming up. Do you have more stuff to put up on the screen here? Uh, let's let's throw that back on. So there is a uh, one thing I did want to talk about. This is actually a relatively new thing, and uh, we're not really promoting some of these because I think we have too many people ready. So, uh, and I'll just mention it. So uh, in, at Windward Mall, we're going to be having a spe specifically because uh, everyone's a target today. Everybody, and not only do we hear things, I, I actually hear stories when I go out there. But uh, we're going to be having a cyber safety presentation for the seniors out there at Windward Mall. Uh, as well as Kahala Mall. No, not, not too many people, we've got to take a little break here. Um, not too many people realize that everybody's a target because so many people think, oh, I'm nothing, yeah. I'm nobody, right? Yeah. But everybody knows somebody. Mm -hmm. So if an elderly, elderly person gets attacked, uh, they could be someone's father, mm -hmm. who's a father of an important person, yep. and they have access to that person's computer. And like I said, if they're living in the same home or in the same network, now they have access to somebody else. So even though you might think you're innocuous in the world, you might not be. You know, you, you could know somebody that has access to something that's kind of dangerous. Yeah. We got to take one little break here. We're going to come back after we pay some bills. Uh, until then, everybody stay safe.
Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. And aloha, my name is Calvin Griffin, the host of Hawaii in Uniform. And every Friday at 11 o'clock here on Think Tech Hawaii, we bring you the latest in what's happening within the military community. And we also invite all your response to things that's happening here. For those of you who haven't seen the program before, again, we invite your participation. We're here to give information, not disinformation. And we always enjoy response from the public. But join us here, Hawaii in Uniform, Fridays, 11 a.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. Yeah, you made it through the break. And we're back. I'm Dave the Cyber Guy. And again here, I'm with Reynold Hioki and Tim Ames. Tim Ames is from Hawaii Tech Support. Reynold Hioki is the State Cybersecurity Coordinator. And I did it again, twice. You got I was stuttering, it. I got through it. Wow. <laughs> right on. Woo, super fly. <laughs> I'll right do that on. too. <laughs> okay. So let's go back into the, um, the Hawaii, what do we call it, the Hawaii... This month is Hawaii's. Oh, National Cybersecurity Awareness Month? National. Yes. Oh, it's National Cyber It's a national. Security. I should know that, and I don't, and I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you're on the show, though. Let's go back to some of the images we had up and just uh, go over the last thing. We talked about the um, hands-on Yeah, workshops. so well, we, we actually did this last week because uh, Pro Ridge had an event, and it wasn't part of National Cybersecurity, but basically we're calling it Cyber Central, and basically just having uh, several tables at the different shopping centers and inviting uh, the, the, uh, the community to come and just come talk to us. So we'll be handing some things out. So we'll have people that are talking about uh, Cyber Patriot, which is our high school, middle school cybersecurity sport, uh, college uh, clubs, uh, as well as uh, things at the federal and state level, so different programs, so DHS, those type of things. Uh, but really, what the purpose of that is for the community to come in and just ask us questions. We'll have cybersecurity professionals ask a question, start a conversation, and hopefully you get your answers, uh, your questions answered. That's great. So that that's what we have. There's actually, uh, I'm, I won't mention that there is a third shopping center that's almost there. Uh, they just haven't fully confirmed us. So. Uh, uh, well, you got stay the, tuned. two sides of the island already. Windward yeah. on so uh, there's there's, there's, there's the a there's a third side of the island. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, I'm hoping it's all in Moana. Uh, no, you, you 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 can hope, but nameless. Okay. nameless yeah. All right. Oh, uh, okay. I really the, recommend the Whole Foods Queen. Uh, the, <laughs> that's the one we're going to be at, uh, and that's where we're going to be going through the device. You know, teaching people how to do secure mobility. Yeah. Uh, and who's doing fantastic. that? Fantastic. Uh, it's going to be. Uh, <laughs> I, are you are you trying to put me on the line? You're on the spot. I'll be there. I'll be there. But uh, yeah, our, our uh, we have uh, John Stramberg's going to be there too. And he Once again, under the, the bus. Community, so yeah, Good job. I just threw him. <laughs> okay, right on. Right on. <laughs> Hopefully he's not watching. He's like, what? I'm doing that? Oh no! <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's next? We have we have more graphics. Yeah, there. one last graphic coming up. And uh, this is basically a bunch of events that are happening that you might want to tune in, read about, or watch. So you're actually in, we're actually in there, right there. Uh, so we had some uh, discussion. I mean, we're on NPR and, and others. So uh, probably the big thing is uh, midweek had a special on National Cybersecurity Awareness Month uh, right at the end of September. So I'm not sure if that 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 is out. It's on the website, uh, page 32, and. Uh, uh, Paige uh, Takea is, is the one that, that did that for us. So we have three more graphics. You want to? Yeah, one la I, I think there's actually one last set of information. This is really the catch all. A uh, bunch of different things happening. Uh, if you want to get involved with cybersecurity in the state uh, and so forth. So in the very top, there is a kind of oh, ISAC, this right? MS ISAC is a state local government organization that does cybersecurity. And they actually have a national cybersecurity poster contest. And uh, you have to turn your, your submission in by uh, January. But they take the top 13 posters in the nation and they make a calendar. Oh, cool. And then they distribute it nationally. To, uh, unfortunately, it's just state and local government because that's how they're funded. 
But yeah, you can be, if your poster wins, you will be uh, distributed nationally. Wait, so, I might be out of the loop. 13 posters get selected, but there's only 12 months. Yeah, so there's a front and back. Oh, right, and all so that. Yeah. yeah, got it, got it. <laughs> I'm glad you got that. Like, yeah, yeah, 13. It's, yeah, it's, right it's, on. It's, okay, it's making sure. It's an each year. Or lead, lead decade or whatever it is. October, Cybersecurity Month gets its own, you know, two posters. Yeah, there's an right, extra special. month, yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, tell me, Tim, what's going on in your... And, uh, universe yeah so we've been really busy we uh this year and next year are going to be our pushes to really get people up to speed on cybersecurity tools all right so the endpoint protection and the security monitoring of the network is huge we mentioned you know it, it's important for folks at home to have safe computing environments it's it's even more important in my opinion for businesses to do that because that's that's mission economy critical. right it's yeah. mission critical yeah. People don't, businesses don't survive attacks. Let's yeah. describe endpoint. Yeah, endpoint. endpoint. So an endpoint is a workstation or a server that sits in your in your environment. And things like, you know, those phishing emails where you click on the, the cool kitten, you know, the cutest kitten in the world. Yeah. You know, you get those phishing emails, you click on it. Uh, stopping those attacks, you know, when you click on it, it starts to download a file. Stopping right. those processes from running, from launching the attack, from giving the attackers an end to your network. That's the that's the critical part. In in typical antiviruses now, just don't don't cut it. You know they're very signature based, which means they're only looking for a file. Is this is this file known bad? People know ways around and, that. And now. it's the ones that have already been executed, documented, and are now right. Known in, so in no the wild. zero days. A zero day is an attack that a, you know hackers know about. A hacker knows about, but even the companies that wrote the software may not know that exists. So they're not. There's no patches available. The scariest for it. ones, yeah. zero days, yeah. Right. Now, mobile devices, endpoints. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same so thing. So, mobile device management, that is huge. And if you are a business and you're letting people look at their email, you know, their company email on a private, you know, personal phone or even laptops, laptops have mobile device management, computers have mobile device management. But the phones are pretty critical because nobody thinks about it. And then it's not even just a cybersecurity thing. It's a, it's a business thing. If you if you have somebody with access to their email and all your customer information, and they leave the organization. How do I get that back? Right. You know, how do I keep them from taking that their account list to the next place they go? So yeah. That's huge. Um, I, I think this is the most popular computing platform now is mobile. I think so. Yeah, it's, it's moved yes, it way to the top. So I think this is like like you said, mission critical that you, you get this in front of everybody, and it's, again, high mentality. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about a couple of things really quick before the end of the show that have to do with mobile security okay. and, uh, and are just popping up on the radar. First of all, uh, McAfee, mm -hmm. the man, put out a tweet saying that the new presidential alert has access to the quote-unquote E911 chip on your phone and therefore transmits mobile data and all bunch of other stuff. and. Uh, the president now has access to all this stuff. Mm. Not true. Right. Not exactly. Yeah, it's it's actually um, a system like the Amber Alerts in California, where uh, they can push out messages to your mm -hmm. phone, and it's very area specific. Yeah. So it's not just everybody in the nation, unless it really involves the entire nation. And mm. if the president mm. pushes out a message, he's actually got to do it through FEMA. Right. And from FEMA. Not Twitter. Hold on. <laughs> I'm really hoping FEMA is listening right now because if the president wants to do some kind of marketing or campaign message, I'm depending on you to say, no, if we do that, that means we won't have credibility when a real emergency mm, arrives. So true. FEMA, do your job. Trump, go away. Uh, so he really doesn't have uh, access to that information. What the E911 system is set up to do is to give emergency responders mm -hmm. Uh, access to your data, your GPS data, access to your uh, your mobile camera, so they can right. take pictures. And the reason is, if uh, if they can't pinpoint your location from cell towers, say uh, Honolulu, you can get a cell tower to pinpoint your location within six feet because mm -hmm. of city. But if I go hiking on Diamond Head, they can only get within a half a mile of me yeah. from oh. GPS. Right? It's it's not that accurate all the time. So if they take a picture with your camera, you might be pointing at something that to the landmark, and they can home in on you. So that's important. Uh, that kind of data is only uh, consumed by emergency responders, right. right? Not by the president sending it out. And by the way, there's no such thing as an E911 chip. Right. Mm. That's that's yeah. good. Thank you for clarifying yeah, that. Because and you know, not. honestly, you know, 
McAfee's had his, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's a little he's, yes, yes, he is, yes, absolutely. He's, so yeah. he, I, I hear everything with, with a grain of salt. <laughs> uh, but with that E911, it, it is important. So it's an important tool for, for first responders to have. So when yeah. we set up voice over IP phones, for example, or we use like uh, any kind of soft phone, um, like Microsoft uh, Office phones or whatever. This is, this is an important we have service, to put yeah. yeah, we have to put an address on there before we can assign the phone. We have to say whether it's their work address or when somebody calls 911 from that line, where are police fire rescue going to show up? Right. You don't want them showing up to their home when they're at work, you know what I mean? So Or a GPS a huge, location that's yeah. down the block. Right. Right, because they can't home in. Absolutely. On it, right. So that is it's important service. We need this in this country. Uh, there are some privacy issues. Mm -hmm. Law enforcement's been using a little willy-nilly in a little place, <laughs> you know, in a place or two, uh, without real solid warrants. So it's a concern. Yeah. However, with every technology comes another concern, and th this is just one of them. Uh, more concerns coming up. Uh, there is a rumor. Bloomberg News came out with another article, two years after the first article, saying that China has been putting um, innocuous-looking chips of different sizes and shapes and colors on our circuit boards for our computers and uh, mobile devices that will allow them to hack our devices. And this has not yet been disproven. Mm. However, as we were talking about before the show, neither one of us are surprised. Right. Yeah. Are you surprised? No. I'm not yeah. surprised. That they're a competitor. Of course they're going to do something like that. We make all our stuff where they are. So if they had an opportunity to do this, why not? Yeah. I think it's a completely real possibility. Uh, we got to remember Stux. Well, we got to remember Stuxnet. Stuxnet. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right. Right. It was engineered to take down to take down you know a a government facility or you know the Iranian government facility for for their nuclear uh, energy. It was engineered for that. There's no reason. There's no common sense that tells us that a nation state wouldn't do that if they had the opportunity yeah. to to at least you know stage something like that. Now with Lenovo, I'm not really too surprised. Lenovo bought IBM back in I think 2015. Right. All they, the ThinkPads are now. ThinkPads are now. Think pads are yeah. Now. No, yeah no. So they brought that ThinkPad and. Even in 2016, they had a firmware issue. And you mentioned two years ago. Right, was the right. First one. They had Little a piece of code. Hidden. That when you logged in, it would report back to Lenovo's headquarters saying, you know, the location and all that kind of stuff, details. Yeah. That you could not get, you couldn't turn it off. They had to release a new firmware patch to turn it off because even right. after you completely wiped your computer, did a fresh install, it was still there. So firmware, let's just, for the cheap seats again, yeah. firmware is code that runs on computer chips mm -hmm. that are called EEPROMs, electronically erasable programmable programmable read-only memory, and uh, that code stays on that chip no matter what Windows operating system or whatever you're right. running. It just stays there until you erase it and put a new set of code on there, and it controls things like access to memory and to the circuit board and computer bus and USB. It tells a computer how to be a computer. There you yeah. go. Yeah, it's the first step in launching your computer. We only have about a, a minute left, maybe a little bit less. Let's do another shout-out to the Hawaii Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Okay, so if we put that last slide up, so a lot of the things that, uh, that I discussed, collectively all of us discussed uh, this afternoon, uh, you can find all of that information, specifically that infographic that we talked about at ohs.hawaii.gov forward cyber. So that's, uh, not only do you find that, but really it's, it's the Hawaii uh, website that has all of our community cyber uh, safety, cybersecurity uh, community side uh, stories, events, uh, and activities. That's wonderful, and, and this is for people living here or for people visiting. Come it's, on by and, and get some information. It, you can Love do both, have you. but it's main, it is a Hawaii-centric uh, site. So all the things happening in Hawaii relative to cyber safety, it's on there. Wow, thanks guys. Thanks for being here. And uh, we'll, we'll be seeing Always you both very you. soon. Thank yeah. you very much. We'll have the Girl Scouts on in either next week or the week after. We'll, we'll, we'll see how, that. how soon we can do that. And uh, thanks for playing. All right. Aloha, everybody. Thanks for joining me on the Cyber Underground. Join us next week for another exciting episode. Until then, stay safe.